All right, William, we're going to take you for therapy. Oh, your therapist is actively hanging herself right now. All right, let's go to the next room. Like, what are you? Why are you still there? What? Are you, how is that just like a day like any other day? Ah, she hanged herself. All right, anyway, move on, uh, uh, did, move along. Did, did you have her? No, no, I put tell someone else in the pool. Yeah, no, that's fine. She's fine. <laughs> Hey, Internet! It's Paul. It's Matt! The Dork Lords, we are here talking about Westworld, Season 3, Episode 6, Decoherence. So, uh, our title uh, deals with a tricky scientific term about quantum decoherence. I'm not going to even try to understand what that all means. But I think generally, it's talking about how when a system uh, is no longer in isolation, it starts to break down. Yeah, um, one thing I've noticed about this and uh, uh, devs, which also uh, has a quantum uh, uh, correlation, um, TV writers seem to think quantum means magic. <laughs> <laughs> and movie writers, too. You're right. You throw in the word quantum, it's like, whatever. Just throw it. Yes. Uh, quantum invisibility. Uh, uh, quantum time travel. Yep. Got it. Um, so Nerve magic possible, but because of quantumness quantum I think the theme involves the fact that uh, Dolores and William both are having to deal with fractured versions of themselves they're no longer in isolation they're breaking down they've got these you know with William it's therapy he's got all yep. these versions of himself Dolores has obviously these versions of Dolores including Charlotte yep. Yep. Uh, and so I think that's where this decoherence uh, comes uh, into play oh maybe so there you go. Boom. Uh, so, our uh, just to go to the the beginning and end of this episode, we open with Maeve in the Sublime or a version of the Sublime as like a little sure, taste. Yeah. Here's what life could be like with you and your daughter in a field. Uh, I always like that. You know, that from a Gladiator. They've done that whole like, you know, I, if I walk through a wheat field and I r brush my hand through the wheat, supposedly that's like heaven. I'm like, oh, I've been in fields. I don't, I. I get kind of bored from hanging out in an empty field after a while, but okay. There's a soccer ball, then yes, now we're fine. Uh, but anyway, so... So, so and you're saying in the afterward, you'd be like, um, can somebody get to hell? Yeah, <laughs> right. Or can we get like a mower? Can we mow this? <laughs> we can't really play the soccer no, in this. No. Uh, no, keep it wheat. Keep it at waist height. So anyway, uh, she is getting this taste of it. Uh, Sirach then shows up and says, hey, you know, if you fail again... This, this, this is not for you. Um, she's having her body uh, re-spun up because she was uh, killed off by Musashi a couple episodes yep, ago. Yep, yep. So in that time, she is hanging out uh, in War World. She does ask Sirak, uh for help. Help meaning more hosts for him on my side to combat the hosts on Dolores' side. Sure. So that's, that's kind of where we start the episode. Uh, yep. We end the episode with Charlotte having uh, raced back to, it's not really her family, but her human Charlotte's family to try to rescue them. And, say, mm -hmm. and she's in a car with them, a vehicle, and she's like, all right, I'm going to keep you safe. And right as she says that, a bomb hits the car, a uh, huge explosion, yep. Presu presumably husband and son are dead, and we, she's kind of Terminator-like crawling out of the burning wreckage Although, unlike a Terminator, we see her cry. Ah. Ah, like, I know now why you cry, though it is something I can never do. Not like <laughs> Westworld robots that are far superior. Yes. Um, so we get this idea that, uh, oh, she had, in fact, cared about this family. Now they're dead, and so, you know, she's got a huge grudge. That's what I'm getting out of that. Not that sure. she needed one before. She was getting shot at already, but... Yeah. I, it seemed like she's more determined than ever, even though now she has very little skin left. Uh, in the will game? we? Will we in the, in the game? Will we see her? You think? I kind of feel like we're gonna for the rest of the season. We're gonna just see like burned out Charlotte, or do you think she'll have a new body? I again? mean, I don't see why they wouldn't do that. Why they wouldn't yeah. do what in terms have of have her be burned for the rest of the series? I don't see yeah. why they wouldn't do that. Dolores' resources may have been limited, I mean, you know, in ter terms of how many bodies she can have. 
Yeah, although we do see, like, it seems like there's a lot of different little creation centers around here. We've got, <laughs> you got the one, uh, Bernard's house, you got the one now, uh, Delos, uh, Insight's right. got That's one. True. Like, yeah, it's fine, it's easy. Yeah. 3D printing. Um, so before I launch into, uh, you know, we major chats and stuff, generally speaking, sir, your thoughts overall, you had been kind of disappointed with a few of the episodes leading up to this. Did this change your mind? Are you back in the saddle? What's what's uh, going on with that? I was disappointed yet again. All right. So be it. Um, yeah, now I don't. Uh, now it's just really me adjusting myself to the course that they're, they're taking. Uh, I still don't feel like uh, uh, Maeve has enough justification to fight on the side of, um, you know... That is so uh, true. I fight or not. And, and I was even less convinced that, wow, why would Dolores be so burning a bridge with, you know, why she could be totally magnanimous with Maeve, and yet she's all like, oh, well, uh, maybe I'd kill your family. Maybe I would do that. <laughs> it's like, really? That's what you do? I mean, Jesus. But you know, your so. your point your point about Maeve and we've we've talked about it in previous episodes, but it's still so true. And I guess that's part of the part of my joke about why is a field so heavenly. But it's wow. the same idea with like, she, it's not her kid. She knows it's not her kid. And her kid's just gonna stay a kid forever. She's just gonna hang out in the field. Like well, the Maeve we know a, would be like. Enough, I just, well, no, no, no. I have to disagree there. It was enough for her to to not run away she knew their daughter was fake when she went back to get, get her no she no she knows she's fake that's my point so why is it a wonderful gift like why you know that's the reward she's supposedly well, getting she wants to be with her daughter she does yeah but okay it's, it seems you know, like I, my my thinking is that you know like the person who says uh, i'll let you be with your daughter and i'll kill all the other hosts is not someone you should trust. <laughs> <laughs> trust the person who's like, I want to save all the hosts, you know, and then, and not irrationally, but I'll kill you. You know, to me, it made far more sense, like, oh, he's got a part to play, or, you know, I don't want to be the person to kill a host. So uh, Dolores says, oh, Bernard can exist, but I'll, I'll cripple him so he can't cause any damage to me. That makes sense. But this whole, you know, oh, hey, I'll kill your daughter or whatever. What, it's like, oh, really? Jesus. <laughs> so we, we've we got especially three storylines happening in this episode. And if I were to uh, maybe have a bone to pick with this episode, I felt like it it tried to do too much in, in one episode. I feel like maybe if they took two of these three storylines, it, it, it got disjointed when it was like, Jumping through, you spent a couple of minutes at one, a couple of minutes at another, a couple of minutes at another. I, I wanted to spend more time in you know, like a particular storyline, and it, I started to get annoyed by it. The three storylines would be uh, Maeve interrogating uh, Connell's Dolores. So it's the Dolores that was uh, the security guard Connell's. He blew up yep. the previous episode. They recovered his uh, uh, pearl, and that's, yep. who, that's who is being interrogated. So that, sure. that bit is happening. Then you've got Charlotte trying to save uh, Delos and survive uh, yeah. the takeover yeah. of uh, from Ciroc. And then you've got William. Charlotte. Uh, uh, Charlotte, okay. Uh, you've got William doing this augmented reality uh, therapy uh, with That's these other versions of himself. So those three off. things All are happening. Conversation. That's what I, I texted you. I said, yeah. oi. Yeah. Just I just so got a single word from Paul. I had not been. I, I watched the episode later in the night, so he was watching it right off the bat, and all I got from him was "oi," <laughs> like "oh." It's so <laughs> ponderous. It's like, oh wait, let's let's talk about all our relationships, as you know. And he tries to cut to the no, no, no. We have to have this laborious conversation about how uh, the older version of ourselves is letting go down the younger version of ourselves, so whatever crap they were talking about. It's like, oh god. You know, uh, and, and so they're trying to surprise us or something because you know they're uh, trying to help him because he's uh, the the Delos people or whatever are trying to figure out what's wrong with William and so I guess there's something weird about his body so maybe he's not real or some crap. Oh no, I, 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 it's what I think you're talking about when they talk about how an unknown protein yes. in his body. Oh, I think what that is. I could be wrong, but I feel like that's huh. at, um, when they're when Charlotte is uh, having William committed yes. back a couple episodes ago, and she pricks him in the neck. 
Oh. This episode, she says, yeah, we tracked him. And oh, okay. uh, so I think I think the unknown protein was a tracker she would put okay. in his bloodstream. Okay. And so now they know where, uh, I guess they needed to know where the facility was. It's probably a secret mm. facility. Okay. Um, so I think that's what that was. I don't think it's, a, I could be wrong, but you're right. I mean. Oh, I hope, I hope it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, oh, I hope you're right. Okay. Um, I think that's the tracker. I still don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Man. I, I um, don't like I don't like this whole section with him. It's just well, like, interesting. like why is he even there? Well, you shared why that article with me important? that yeah. shows that you're not the only one who didn't like it. Uh, yeah. Ed Harris had some yeah. very strong words. It was an article with I forget the publication, but a legit publication. And he sat down to talk with the interviewer. Was like, I don't like the direction of this, that my character is going in. I, I just, I have strong feelings about it. But it wasn't my decision. I just had to do what they gave me. Like, whoa! The Hollywood, the Hollywood Reporter. Hollywood Reporter. West World star Ed Harris on his twist-filled season three storyline. It was hard to enjoy. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> that's pretty strong considering at that I point when he like, gave that interview, it, that episode hadn't even aired yet. Yeah. And, he's, and he's like, oof. Anyway, so he was obviously not pleased about it. Um, and yeah, so he emerges from this experience as the man in white uh, as opposed to the man in black. Oh. Actually, the thing I the thing I did want to see, and you know, they, they deprived us of that moment. I'm like... All right, if you're going to go through all this thing where the man in white kills all these former versions of himself, well, let's see him fight the man in black. Let's see it. Uh, and they just they cut in after the man in black's already dead. I'm like, yes. oh, okay. Well, I, I thought that guy was a little more capable. But man in white is the ultimate, uh, you know, whatever, version of William. Basically, it comes down to, hey, yeah, I did terrible things in my past. I tried to make a rosy picture of it, pretending I was just a sweet kid when actually I had anger issues even back then. And uh, But you know what? The past is the past. Going forward, I'm the good guy. And I, like, okay, I know what I got to do. I got to, I guess by being the good guy means I'm going to try to help humanity versus the robots. Yeah, who knows? I guess. Now, he also wakes up after that revelation in order to meet up with Bernard and Stubbs who I predicted would probably show up at the education center they have. Uh, we do not see Dolores Prime and Caleb in this episode. Mm -hmm. I theorized that they might be on their way to that re-education center mm -hmm. uh, last week. I don't know that that's true, but that could, they're en route somewhere sure. in this episode. We hear, we hear her on the phone with yes. Charlotte. We do know it's roughly matching in time the time frame of last episode because... When Williams, uh, Williams' therapist gets the the insight download, you know she's like, "Well, tell me about yourself, William." Oh, let me check my phone. Ah, you know she gets the yes. you're you're a terrible person and you're addicted to drugs. And you're gonna lose your kids and you're gonna get fired. And anyway, she ends up killing herself. Which I'll just say this: <laughs> this reminds me a little bit of a movie that was great. No, of uh, Batman v Superman: Dawn of oh. Justice. Uh, the beginning of that. So there's the beginning of that movie. I don't want to get too far afield here, but um, please don't. There, there's an attack happening. You know, Metropolis, and and Bruce Wayne coming over from Gotham to check out his business and whatever, oh, and, yes. and the town. And so he he gets he crosses the water, or whatever. He's in the Metropolis. He calls the CEO or whatever of his company, and he's like, "You can let the people go." Get him out of there. And the CEO's like, oh, right away, Mr. Wayne. Okay, everybody, you can leave. He's like, why are they still there in the first place? <laughs> it, they had to wait at this office until the, the owner gave them permit. The city's under attack by a hostile alien force. Ah, I got these papers to do. So it's kind of the same idea here where it was like, all right, William, we're going to take you for therapy. Oh, your therapist is actively hanging herself right now. All right, let's go to the next room. Like, what? Are you, why are you still there? What? How is that just like a day, like any other day? Ah, she hanged herself. All right, anyway, move on, uh, did, move along. Did, did you have her? No, no, I chose someone else in the. Place. Yeah, no, that's fine. She's fine. She's. I saw her profile. Boy, she is like whoop whoop whoop. So that's fine. Um, yeah, it just seemed like we we do get the feeling by the end of the episode. The explanation they give for why Bernard and Stubbs could so easily get, come into William are like, well, I guess they forgot about you. So it sounds like maybe while William was under 
uh, more people started getting their profiles and uh, freaking out. But the there's chaos. But it was just yeah. so weird that the chaos was right there, and these guys are like, "No, my job is very important, and I'm going to take you over to the next room for interrogation and therapy." Damn it! Yeah, um, so I mean, good for them. You know, Mr. Robot handled uh, global chaos far better, mm. far more uh, easier to believe and understand um, than this. You you received a file that said that your life is going to be mediocre. <laughs> ah! I'm a 4.8. Damn you! Ah! Kill all humans! Whatever. Right. Um, I will Kill say this too, though. Kill all other humans. Kill all other humans. <laughs> Maybe I can raise my score. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> while I'm on that topic of like people acting in a way that doesn't really make sense, I'll say there's a few. We've got some minions that do minion-like behavior in this episode. Uh, one of the one of the great moments to me was when uh, Charlotte is being found out. Right, so she's in the boardroom with yes. the execs. And, you know, Serac's like, we've been trailing you since I got here. Right. Boy, you're stupid. I don't know why you didn't think this was coming. She's like, I did. Okay, so <laughs> what had happened was security guard guy, he just came off his job apparently over at the uh, re-education center. Cause he's kind of, anyway, he pulls this canister out of her purse. It's got little red lights on it. And it, it's not like it looks like a thermos. It's the canister <laughs> of something. And he just shrugs and sticks it on the table. And then a minute later, she's like, aha, my plan. And it shoots out gas and it, I assume it kills, either knocks him out or kills everybody. I'm like, why did, what did you, what did you think this was? Like, you're like, oh, look, it's like a military grade canister. I'll just put it on this table here. And uh, what's next? Oh, God, it's shooting gas. It's like, you're an idiot. Fire that guy. I don't know. His, his, his job rating should go down in his insight profile. Um, but similarly, the guys who insist on shooting at the riot control robot like, oh. over and over again. <laughs> this thing's like this Ed 209. Yes, yes. It's like a mountain of rebar. And they're like, dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig. and then the bullets are bouncing off. Yeah. Boy, it's not having an effect. You know what will probably work? More bullets! <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Like, oh, guys. You saw one guy after Come on. a lot of people got killed, he ran away. <laughs> yeah, okay. The one, one guy smart guy. Promote sense. that guy. A little sense. <laughs> because he's like, I'll shoot too. Oh, you da -da 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 -da. and that guy. I'll just leave. I'll leave now. <laughs> my, my, uh, my, you know. Professional rating probably went up in my profile. Let me check. Yep. All right. Woo. I'm at a 3.7. Um, anyway, so there's this idiots acting like idiots apparently in yeah. this uh, episode. The other thing, I mean, we're I don't want to be a crap on this episode. I there were some fun things to enjoy about this episode. But um, while we're in the we're in the pool of things that crap. annoyed us, yeah. <laughs> um, Maeve back in War World just taking out Nazis again just seemed. Kind of like a waste of time. Oh, I mean, yeah. she was literally oh, wasting yeah. time. She was just, yes. Yes. I have time to kill. I'll kill people. Yeah. I guess oh, like uh, she, that she, was good. training uh, yeah. or like, yeah, it was yeah, like. At first I thought, oh, she's trying to get help. Maybe she's trying to yes. see which of the Nazis are really talented at fighting. But I was no. thinking that she was going to get help too or yeah. figure something out. But no, it was just like, oh, yeah, I'm good at this. Why? Because. Why she just didn't meet up with uh, Hector the way that we'd seen him before? Because he was about to be at the door. Right, why correct. Why just meet with them and spend some time with him? You know, he tried to establish that you want it to be really poignant when he dies. Yes. He could have spent more time doing that. That would have been perfectly fine and justified. He it is true. He didn't spend any more time with... Uh, um, uh, Lee, with, Sizemore. Lee, we didn't need to spend any, time more, any more time with him. It certainly didn't need to see killed Nazis. Uh, yeah, the Nazi time. killings did feel like filler. It did. It was like, yeah. we've already seen this when she didn't know what was going on. Now she's yeah. back, fully aware that she has yeah. complete control over these guys. Yeah, yeah she beat them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it was just kind of like a, hey, this will be cool to watch. We'll kill some Nazis. Mm, okay. For a lesser show, cool. For this show, mm, yeah. eh, 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 eh. wasn't thrilled with that choice. 
Um, and as you say, it did take away time that they could have spent reintroducing the relationship because we don't really see uh, Hector as Hector, you know, a no. fully realized Hector for yeah, more than no. just a couple of minutes. No. He's back yeah. online and yeah. he's dead. Yeah. Um, and while it was, you know, there was a sh- kind of a shock factor and she was very moved by it. I think it, we would have been more moved if we kind yeah. of remembered, oh, right, Hector, they had this relationship and, oh, yeah, he's really touched by it. Um, it you did have a... a whole thing, actually, where you could reorient him to the idea of who he is. Actually. Right. Because, right. you know, she could have, like, okay, let me boost up one of your stats or something so you can understand better what's going on. She could have done that. And then just had an actual scene, which would, or a number of scenes would have been great. Because then she could have really discussed, like, why are you trusting this idiot or this, this rich guy? And why are you doing this? And why are you doing that? I agree that, uh, yeah, that it lacked the emotional weight they, I think, hoped it would have. It reminded me a lot of The Matrix, right? The, oh, if I destroy the thing out here yeah, 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 in yeah, The yeah, Matrix, yeah. you die. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so when Charlotte destroys the pearl which well i thought they were like solid but it's just like she mushed it like a well grape. i mean they're robots. they're strong but yeah. yeah but i mean it kind of mushed instead of crunched it was like splurp mm-hmm. anyway she splurped and um hector hector died mave is has lived on the edge twice mm-hmm. when she gets stabbed by musashi musashi's about to take Dolores yes. is about to take her head off and take her but nope oh people arrive and in this case Charlotte's about to yeah. smush Maeve and uh, a couple of bullets show up and she's like ah I'm out of here but she well, does take it uh, shows really why not why but Dolores. But, you know how little reason they have for Maeve to exist at all I mean, in, what, in what way there's all these forces against her she really shouldn't be alive um <laughs> And she only exists to thwart Dolores. We have some idea of who her host backup is going to be. Right, so one was going to be Hector. He's dead. Right. Um, uh, some intrepid folks online discovered from the, uh, the code that was, being, that was put on one of the ones that was spooling up that it's Clementine. It matches okay. Clementine's profile. Uh, the other one... You can make the because the actress who played Clementine showed up at a at a premiere event for this season. Yeah. And so so I was like, oh look, she's here, and now it's pretty much confirmed she's in it. Well, another mm-hmm. person who was at that same premiere yeah. is the is the woman who played. I'm forgetting her name, but she was in the in Shogun World. She was the Shogun World bow wielding woman oh. that was like a the counterpart to uh, Armistice. I'm looking at the uh, cast list now. So that. A, a character, I'm guessing, is the other host oh, okay. that's going to back up uh, Maeve. So I think it'll be Maeve, Clementine, and Shogun World's Armistice. Oh, okay. I, think, I think are going to be uh, uh, hanging out there. We see a, one of them being, or a body being created. Maeve, Maeve has her new body at the very end of this as well. Charlotte's trying to save the host data, yeah. uh, which, you know, basically, Sarak's like, just, you know, burn all the bodies. Yeah. When they're doing the flamethrower in the body, like, woo! Um, yeah, he's trying to take everything down. Um, what, are you, what are you shaking your head about, sir? I just it's like, uh, there's billions of words. I'm just get rid of all of it. Just uh, throw it all away. Just save those five. That's it. That's all you need. Well, he sees it, obviously, as this huge threat, I assume, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he's, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, we got to call ourselves, um, oh, what are those guys? Who are the, um, yeah. Waldorf and, uh, uh, yeah. Statler? <laughs> Statler and Waldorf. That's, uh, that's us. <laughs> ah, anyway, so, yes, yeah, so we'll be hanging out on the balcony. Look down. <laughs> I mean, the action scene was cool. I mean, as much as they were shooting at, at Joe 9 ineffectually, I liked the, the bit where she, she being Charlotte, brings, uh, the robot to help her in that situation. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That was cool. It was a, it was a fun breakout scene. There's that scene where she's talking to Dolores on the phone, and yes. she's like, "Hey, you know, they're gonna come after my family." And Dolores is like, "Well, they're not your family." Right. Uh, and Charlotte almost has to kind of remember, "Oh, right, they're not my family." Mm-hmm. Uh, we we see that she's she's being pulled away. She says, "I I find myself getting farther away from you." 
Uh, she says, why didn't you just burn the emotions out of our code? Yes. And Dolores says, well, we, at that moment she says, we considered it. I was like, oh, that's interesting. She says, we considered it, but if we change ourselves to survive, uh, then it wouldn't matter if we did. That's a pretty big change for her in a way, because I think there was a time sure. when I think she was like, get rid of human emotions, boo. You know, when she's like screwing with Teddy and she's like, you become more of a killer robot. Um, so right. For- well, it seemed like as she did that, that she had uh, second thoughts. But apparently her second thought was, boy, I should have just done it myself. Uh, <laughs> so uh, That's her second thought. That's her second thought? All right. So, uh, but that was an interesting little conversation there. It was like, you know, you, made, you gave me these emotions and now they're really causing me pain. Um, and yeah, but I was just sort of like, oh, yeah, here they are. Trying to establish a reason why May, uh, uh, Hale and Charlotte's now going to, or uh, Shaloris is going to go against uh, Dolores. Yeah, so that's a good question, though. That I agree that that's what that seems to be setting up. But... Yeah. At the end, it's sur- I think it's pretty clear that it's Serac that blows up the car. You see this agent like walking by in the background. So it seems like she has all the reason to hate Serac in that moment, unless maybe she displaces that. She thinks, to, you know, because Serac mentions it back in the boardroom, and he says like, "Oh, you know, Dolores left you here to die." Maybe she takes that moment and instead of blaming Serac, she's. Like, Dolores, yeah, it's true. Dolores just left me out here to die. Like, see, I, I would think, based on what we saw at the end, that she'd be mad at Serac. That Serac yeah, would be I the guess. grudge. I guess. But, but you're right that it seems like it's setting up more of a anti Dolores. I just don't know how they make I mean, that they jump. Might, like, they still obviously want William to be, um, you know, uh, an adversary, even though he does not seem like a threat at all in any way, shape, or form. Um, yeah, so you've got... So maybe they're leaving Ciroc for, uh, you know, because there's got to be that climactic moment where somebody finally gets killed. And um, so the matchup will probably be Dolores and William and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Holores and, uh, and, you know, Ciroc. Or the, the opposite, because I don't actually care. <laughs> so. It is interesting that the sides are still so nebulous. I mean, on the one hand, it feels like at this moment you would have William, maybe Charlotte, maybe Maeve, and Serac are all like anti Dolores for whatever reason. Uh, and yet, that doesn't seem right. It seems like the sides would be uneven in that situation. So, like, anyway, the, who's on whose side is still very, I think, deliberately nebulous. One of the things I thought was interesting was when Charlotte gets found out. Uh, Serac says, oh yeah, you checked in on your family. Charlotte never would have done that. Uh, like that was the way that he figured out, like, I don't know if he seemed like he already knew because he said when I got here, when I landed, but somehow Um, like the final straw was her checking in on her family. Right, right. But that's, that's interesting because the real Charlotte did check in on her family or, you know. she she left a message for her family, but yes. Um, so could that imply that maybe... Uh, Serac's assumptions are flawed in some way. It seems like he's very sure about himself, and he's like, you know, here's your profile. This is this is you. Uh, much like, not to, spoilers, but devs, right? Part of devs is like, oh, actually, our modeling had was flawed. Maybe is that what, okay. Well, we're gonna have to talk about that. Oh, okay. All right. Um, <laughs> I think uh, it's this in this situation. It's an example of the writers not doing a very good job (laughs) (laughs) like what reason can we have so that he would have been tipped off much earlier oh i don't know because she was one i mean you know it's like do you need a logical reason for that she tripped up someplace i'll also say this he figured it out i'll say this too he reveals ah we knew it was you the whole time she does the gas canister kills everybody tries to shoot him he's a hologram and he's like smiling. He's kind of cocky about it. You're like, what? So you were anticipating that she might, you know, you're going to have Dolores, a very powerful robot with a room full of humans. And you're like, is it an acceptable loss to be like, ah, oh, she just killed half my staff. All right. Anyway, well, we figured her out. <laughs> it's like, man, like people, for a guy who supposedly is like, we got to save humanity. 
humans seem very disposable when it comes to his line well, of work. But. He did say in a dialogue that I liked was, this battle is over, but we're trying to win the war, you know, or, or uh, way back when he was talking to, uh, when he first met Maeve. Yeah, saying yeah. Saying that uh, the future is what I'm fighting for. So who cares about some, you know. I wonder, though, if that was, you know, if you look at the list, how many of them were his people and how many were Delos people. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> That's interesting. Like, I was going to, you know, give you a pink slip, but, you know, this is easier. That's a good point, actually, because there are certainly Delos people in there. Yeah. Uh, I can. So, yeah, you're right. Good point. <laughs> it's like, ah, well, it's a watch. Half <laughs> Delos, half inside. It's fine. Yeah. Um, this is the way I take over. <laughs> I liked the callback line as much as I was still a little weird about this emergence of William as the man in white. It seemed a little pat, but I liked the little bit where, you know, you have uh, Mr. Delos is in in his mind as the uh, yeah. therapy it's leader. A, yeah. And he says like, okay, did your life just happen to you or did you choose it? Right. And William says, if you can't tell, does it matter? And that, of course, is a callback to a couple of times that's happened in the series, but particularly back in season one when he's talking with, I think it's Angela, and he's like, you know, oh, are you a robot? He's like, if you can't tell, does it matter? Um, and so, uh, 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 yeah, in other words, whatever. Ooh. Nature, nurture. It's a, it's a theme that's been explored so many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. But. A, an interesting play on the um, Turing test. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yes, I guess he, does he, I didn't even look. Does he kill little kid him? I guess he does. Oh, yeah. Huh. In Maybe the augmented reality? I mean, uh, the theory he did? Yeah, I think he killed Maybe little he kid him. Ago. And then he's taking a chair to young yeah. William. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Felt like it was a, like a wrestling match or something. Like, yeah. boom, boom, off the top rope. So he's joined up with Bernard and Stubbs. They're obviously on the side against Dolores at this point. Sure, sure. And yeah, he, um, well, all along he's been against Loris. Well, I'm just saying it could switch at some point, right? It could I be a situation where they're like, oh, wait, the real villain is Serac, and we should do whatever we can to thwart him. I don't, you know, I, I still don't know, because neither side's good, right? No, I mean, no. that's neither, ne if either side wins outright, Dolores or Serac, it's bad. That's a dystopian right. future for and mankind. And was Maeve successful in saving everybody in the uh, void or whatever it is. The sublime. The sublime, right? Because she copied everything to really quickly to some hard drive. Oh, you're talking about uh, Charlotte when she does it, yeah. I guess that wasn't the sublime because they need the uh, uh, key. Yeah, so she right, they need key. something. Yeah, maybe just host data information. How to make, how to make hosts. How to make hosts. Use all the YouTube clips on how to make hosts. <laughs> uh, I like the guy who was like Mr. Mr. Snitch. He was like... Oh, they told us not to touch anything. I'm reporting you. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, yeah. turn my back and walk away. <laughs> like, oh, that guy's dead. <laughs> yeah, Here's that. You use that example. Like, oh, we saw when you killed that guy and realized that you were Charlotte. Nope, nope, nope. It's all because of the other reason. Uh, that's you another idiot. your family. That's another idiot being an idiot on the episode. Here's the deal. Yes, yes. Uh, don't say the quiet part out loud. Yeah. You're just like, <laughs> oh, I think I'm a reporter. Well, just to avoid any, you know, conflict or anything, I'll just not say anything. I'll be yeah. like, oh, okay, great. Well, I'm going to go check on that door. Yeah, you would say, uh, oh, I think I'll nominate you for Employee of the Month. That's right. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but no, he's like, yeah, I trust that nothing bad will happen to me in this moment. And oh, look at that. She's a robot. Uh, and now I'm dead. William gets the little, yes. they call them limbic tabs or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which... Sure, as a delivery device, if you're willing to have it done, that's fine. But as you see, it seems like it has a design flaw, which is like, what if the person doesn't want to have a tab in their mouth and you try to put it into their mouth? Oh, oh. they'll bite your <laughs> finger off. Yes. Um, so anyway, it seems like they'd have a... Well, you know, I imagine a lot of times it's done when you're uh, unconscious. Um, but, it's, uh, yeah, you easier know, to this do. is going to hurt. Yeah, you too. Yep. It'll yep. hurt you too. <laughs> right. Those are my my major major points. Any what are your yeah, no. what are your thoughts? No, no, no? I've, I've pretty much gotten out of everything I thought. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the show's I'm not dead to me, but I mean, I'm curious how it ends, and maybe I'll feel better about it once it's over. 
It's true. The ending will impact a lot of how we see these other episodes. Yeah. Although, obviously, you want the process to be as enjoyable as the result. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, but, uh, you know, I don't have any sense at all, at least if I did, I've forgotten it, um, about how this will resolve, you know? Uh, there should be some way for these people to exist. Um, the minor problem that they introduced that just keeps being irritating, or I shouldn't say minor, but it, you know the, how all these humans are reacting to being uh, basically shown that they were, you know, without uh, free will or whatever. You know, who knows how that's going to be resolved? I mean, right? You know, just people just stop liking this company, Delos, and then they now live free and happy lives, or what? Yeah, like, yeah. The, the the ultimate question I'm interested in is, uh, you know. Can they coexist with the robots? So, you know, I wonder if what they're, you know, the thing that just occurred to me is like, maybe they don't have to. Maybe uh, maybe there's nuclear bombs all over. It's like a different version of Terminator where, uh, you know, um, they end up killing everyone. A, a terrible dystopian future. Well, I mean, not for the robots. Right. Oh, good point. If you're a robot, all great. I'm forgetting the commenter's name, I'm sorry, but one of the commenters we had was uh, theorizing that perhaps Ford is still out there somewhere and we're going to have some, you know, interference. Mm. And, uh, they, somehow this was either for, part of Ford's grand plan mm. or, you know, that, uh, anyway. Um, be interesting to see if, if Ford maybe even just gets name dropped in some way. It's like, right. ah, he foresaw that blah, 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 would, you know. I don't know. Yeah, Perhaps. I mean, you know, I think uh, his showing up, unfortunately, might be akin to the architect showing up in the Matrix. But, oh, sure. You know, maybe they can pull it off. You're right, though. With with only two episodes left, uh, I mean, I, I guess it's the time you would do a twist. But boy, it feels like if they did some bizarro twist right at the end, it would feel really gimmicky. Uh, but... You know, we'll see if it's earned. If they figured yeah. out a way to do that, yeah. then uh, let's do it. And yeah, and Ford was such a huge part, especially yeah. of season one, but season two as well. Sure. That you know, for Ciroc to come out now is like, oh, my brother and I are, we're the ultimate, you know, brains in the in the world to be like, well, okay, there was another guy that was kind of on par with the Ciroc brothers. That would be Ford. Uh, did did any of his legacy uh, impact the end of this season in some way so uh we can we can see if that transpires sure but uh yes otherwise uh we'll be back talking about episode seven which is going to be awesome and paul's gonna be here going like whoa i don't even know what i was yeah oh wow what stuck the landing (laughs) it seemed like it was going to be amelia Earhart, but then no no they saved it just like waldorf and statler do they're always like you know what we were wrong and yeah, this was a great episode. That's that part great job, Muppets. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and we will... Oh, it all now comes together. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and we will uh, we'll circle back and talk about uh, devs as well. Uh, do our, our, our recap, having seen all the episodes. So we'll, we'll do that as well. So uh, come on back for that, everybody. And thanks so much. Bye.